Hey, Nishan. So I've got a question for you today. We're looking for your insights on what is going on in Ukraine. We're still in a global pandemic. We've got a war now between Russia and Ukraine. How can we apply exponential technologies, exponential thinking? What could we do? And what are your key insights about what's going on now? Thanks for the question. Um, it's a challenging one. Uh, I think this is very real. You know, conflict is, is leading to a lot of heartbreak and bloodshed. Um, and so the first thing is to recognize that this is a real human tragedy that's taking place right now. So in terms of exponential technologies, the first is how do we start alleviating some of the pain? So how can healthcare technologies be applied to uh, the conflict? So can we be using drones, for example, to deliver you know, healthcare or humanitarian aid to those in most acute need um, of, 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 the, um, of the aid? I think second, um, you know, one of the first things we see in conflicts, particularly involving you know, Russia and, and Ukraine, which are both very advanced nations with very advanced uh, IT capabilities, is that the bits and the bytes are the first thing that's sent across the border. So we're seeing, you know, whether it's misinformation, uh, whether it's uh, the cyber war, cyber attacks, we're seeing a very rapid kind of escalation there. So um, how do we start looking at the implications of these um, exponential technologies, both as a force for good, but also as a kind of challenging force? Um, you know, are cryptocurrencies, for example, being used for money laundering with the sanctions? Um, how do we start bolstering our cyber security in a way that cyber defense as opposed to cyber offensive. And then third, um, I think it's it's worth thinking through uh, what the end game can ultimately look like. You know, exponential technologies has a risk of rapidly accelerating reactions, um, but where are some of the exponential technologies can, that can slow things down? Right now, because of things like um, social media and, 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 and crowd, the entire world is watching firsthand what is happening in, in um, Ukraine. Uh, you know, individual citizens' cell phones are being used as journalists' first account, and that's affecting diplomacy in a very rapid way. Um, so how can we start to think of exponential technologies in a way to act as a safeguard, you know, the use of satellites that we're starting to see right now, um, but how can we build the right sort of institutions that can also slow down the conflict and de-escalate what the, what the end game uh, could look like. So uh, I'm assuming it's a very rapidly moving situation and on a day by day basis, things are going to change, but those are some of the immediate thoughts that, that spring to mind. Thanks. Oh, hey, Nishan. Wow. Thank you so much for those three key points you made. Um, really quite an inspiration. I, I think all the time about how we use technologies to blow stuff up when we could be using it for better reasons. All exponential technologies have the possibility to be used for good and bad. You did a beautiful job of highlighting that for us here today at EXO Insights Hot Takes, and I really, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much, and I'm sure I'll see you again soon. Everybody out there, that was Nishan Degnerain, fantastic human. We're so, so blessed to have him uh, provide his insights to us today. So thank you all. Have a great rest of your day wherever you are.